Hello, thanks for joining me. This is Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl, and I am here to show you how to use the Cyber Monday stencils that I cut up. I was getting ready to click the video on when um, <laughs> people started mowing my grass, and that was kind of loud. So I decided to play with some of the stencils. Here I put, um, I had a strip of paper and I put some watercolor down and put the stencil on top of it. This is in one of my 30 day techniques, by the way. If you haven't signed up for that free class, you probably should. Then the cat came and got involved. This is Sterling. I don't believe he's ever been so intimately involved in my journal work before, so we'll see how this goes. And I've got the other stencils right here. Typically, what I do when I journal is, I did throw some paint around here, is I use two journals. I have my, my main journal, which I only have a couple pages left, and then I have a little baby journal. This is a pocket journal that I made um, when I took a class with Ray Missigman. It was so much fun. But the first thing I do is add some collage. I put some um, tempera paint sticks on here on the background. These are just children's paint, Sargent art. And I just scribbled a little bit here and there. But this is how I will typically start my page. And what I do is I just gravitate back and forth from one page to another. And we'll see how this goes with the cat so close to the action. He's never done this before. <laughs> I think he wanted to be on camera. So lots of times I'll, you know, sometimes I'll gesso, sometimes I'll collage, sometimes I'll just go right at it and um, start using paint right on the page. It really is never the same way twice. twice. And you know, for me, that is the miracle of journaling, and that's what makes it so fun. And it's why I come back to it over and over again, because you can just feel such a freedom to explore and play and whatever might please you in any given moment. I will say that my journaling is very much a self-soothing process for me. So this um, tempera stick is just so unbelievable. It dries so fast, and I really love the idea of it. I'm going to see, I'm curious if I can use a wet wipe and get a stencil design off of this or not. It'll be interesting to see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If I'm not any quicker, I'm not going to be able to do it, but let's see. These are kind of a new supply to me, these tempera paint sticks, and I continue to experiment with them. They're like a gelato in certain ways, yes and no. It's a very, oh, look at that. It does come right up there. And I'm gonna try to smooth that out a little bit to give a pink tint to more of that page. Fun, fun. I do like that. And then I have some other collage bits laid out that I want to use here. Don't let me get in your way, Sterling, okay? Good Lord. What I did before I turned the video on was I basically laid out a bunch of potentials potential things that I wanted to use in this journal spread. And when I'm doing this, getting this before work done, I am relying primarily on colors. I work abstractly and the meaning comes to me as I do the work. So I will just kind of follow a color palette and you know, see what pleases me and put them all together and they will usually work out just great when I do that. Of 
I definitely use all the things. Instead of gesso today, I'm gonna to be using the so flat, the um the white so flat. It's a wonderful, you know, so flat. Well, it drives down flat, and that's just so nice to have when you're in a journal because your pages won't stick together then, and I really do like that. Bring it across. Play a little bit with it. Another thing I will do is add some watercolor right in here, right with the acrylic. I like just mixing it all up. For me, as, as long as they're all water-soluble component parts, they all work together. And I do like pushing the envelope in that way for sure. Get a drip going down here. Okay. And I'll pull some other white over here. This is that opera pink also that I love in a gouache. And here is some in an olive green. I've been dying to use this. Let's do, she says, <laughs> with abandon. <laughs> because why not, right? Gouache is um, also going to dry down to very flat background so I like it very much and as well. I'm going to pull some of this over into the pocket journal because I know I'm going to typically when I do this going back and forth I stick with the same color scheme because it just makes it so much easier to do. Let's see how this pulls up. I'll try some right there. Oh yeah I can get a little Some little circular parts in here. That one didn't show up as much, but that's okay. Now, another thing you can usually do, you know what, let's move this to the side. I'm gonna go to the pocket for a sec. Since the, okay, so this is the clean side of the stencil, and this is the dirty side. So you can put the dirty side up and then get a wet wipe and actually clean the stencil and you'll get a little bit of the stencil pattern right there. As you know, I rarely clean my stencils. This is about the most you'll ever see me doing, <laughs> but it's, um, if you have some leftover on there, you can clean it that way for sure. And then let's get some more tempera on here. Drag through it with a pencil. Generally, I switch back and forth when one gets too wet to continue working on. Then I'll switch to the other one and then I'll switch back. This one, it's not wet just yet. So I love this little dress image for some reason. I um, really want to use it in here. So I think I'll put it right here. Okay. If you have animals that participate in your journal class and your journal work, you need to write me and let me know. I'm just like, seriously, what the heck is going on here? Now, I'm going to use these two little guys right there. Um, I need to grab a sponge. I'm going to just use this sponge. And I tap some paint on, 
and then get it off so that it's not too gloppy. And just tap it off on the lid there. Okay, and then let's move it up to get a third one. All right. I think that's looking very nice. I'm trying to think what else I want to do with this at the moment. Let's see here. I sort of like the idea of some lace on this. This is not lace, but it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? It's just a magazine cutout that I had saved. I get a lot of um, home decor magazines, and they are my favorite for um, using in my art journals. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about the home decor, um, the pictures and the images. I, I really resonate with them. And I've been, <laughs> I've been subscribing to them for years and years. Somebody was biting on the cord. You need to stop that. You hear me? I don't know if you saw that flicker of light. I thought we were going to lose power, but I think it was a cat issue. All right, so this is a, um, a thicker piece of paper. And if you have trouble getting a thicker piece of paper to lay flat, just spritz it with a little bit of water on both sides and that'll loosen the fibers and then you can get it to lay down there and um, go kind of around the curve of that journal then just hold it into place for a second can you get down please get down go go you are such a stinker go come on go 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 somewhere else. Thank you. All right. I have the whole journal space back now. <laughs> Imagine that. I can actually work without someone walking on top of me and my, my supplies. Okay. So this is still, I think it's too, I got it too wet. I'm going to try that again. And here's the thing, is if it doesn't stick, I will just get a piece of masking tape or some washi or something else and put on there because it's that's not a problem for me if it, you know, if it doesn't stay where I want it to go. Okay, so let's get, I wanna get a little bit of this white. I'm gonna use the lid and I'm gonna put these two little things up here at the top. I like this because it has all these little parts that um, I want just as parts, you know? I just love the freedom of having these little shapes that I can pick up and they I know that they'll all be the same when I add them on like that. So this is a very, very cool one. You know, sometimes when I'm designing a stencil, you know, I don't, it's like I have it in my mind and I think, oh, that's going to be so cool. And then it turns out and it can go one way or the other. I'm just going to spill it here with you. Some of them, they turn out and I'm like, oh my God, that is the best thing ever. And some of them, it's like, wow, what I had in my head just was not really translating, you know? And this is one where it was in that first category, way better than expected, you know. Um, as I designed this and then when I started cutting it apart and really using it, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm going to reach for this one a lot. Because I just really like it. All right, so we'll put some more collage down here. 
And again, you can see I'm working in the, um, the color scheme. I'll just add some more white down here across the bottom. Sometimes it's nice to, you can kind of um, do these painterly edges that um, help blend um, the collage part into your overall background, which is nice. I love to scribe over the paint with a pencil. I do like to try to wipe it off the tip though because um, I wanna still be able to use the pencil in the future, right? Okay, I like these windows for sure. Let's see how this is coming along. It's pretty much dry, so peel this up. And you can see it just made a nice little, um, just a little piece of, you know, another piece of collage. So I do like that. I think I'm gonna use this over top of this and use the, the opera. It will get a kind of a tone on tone look because we've got that um, opera. the temper paint in that background there. There's a little white still on here, so it may turn out to be lighter, we'll see. When I take a stencil and put it over top of two collage parts like this, that's my way of blending them together as um, kind of like, for me, I believe it adds a little bit of cohesion to the piece. When you have these two collage parts and then you add paint, and so you're kind of bringing them together, and I will often do that to, um, to get more cohesion in my work. Okay, here's the rest of that lace part that we used over on the other one. And here's another Egyptian part. Let's see here. I've got some extra paint and I certainly don't want that to go to waste. So I'm gonna just carry it around the page. And now I'm going to get some watercolor and try to get some drips going down here. There we go. See how that watercolor is going through where the gouache was? It's a beautiful effect. I had no idea it was going to do that. Again, pushing the limits of the supplies. They're all water soluble. They all work together. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, this page is actually looking kind of interesting, right? I want to lighten that up a little bit. Okay. Something's showing in the corner there in that um, collage element that I was not that hip on, so. And it's okay to pounce more paint on this with the gouache because we know that that dries down so nicely. 
And so even if it's a little bit textured, it's still gonna be quite matte. Now this is getting so wet, it's time for me to trade out and to start, to start working in the little book again because otherwise it'll be too, um, that'll get just too gloppy. All right, so since I've already got this on the brush, I will just bring it around here. Okay, there we go. Use my pencil to scrub through. Now this is just the difference in the pencils. This is a regular pencil. This is a Jerry's Artorama. It's a jumbo jet black, so it's super dark and it has some oil, oil in it. So completely different reaction from both of those pencils. So know your supplies, learn how to use your supplies or just push them to the limit like I do. <laughs> and then you'll either love what they're doing or they'll drive you crazy. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna grab a piece of, I'm gonna grab a piece of masking tape here. So this stay down better. Yep. I need to see what parts of the stencil I have left that I haven't used yet. Oh, I haven't used this yet. Now for me, the scale of this is possibly a little big for what I have going on right here. So I'm gonna reserve this for the other um, part of the other journal. Now these, oh, look at this little guy. This is kind of cute right here. I think I might put one of those on each page. Okay, or maybe over here. All right, let's hold that to use here. The advantage to always painting collage parts is that you always have cool stuff to use in your work. And that's why I can pull out all these things and I have materials that look like me. They're in the color schemes I use and they <clears throat> so frequently go with the rest of my, my paints and the other elements, my moods and all these other things because I have made them. So I would encourage you to make collage parts. It's so fun too. All right, that looks nice. Maybe we'll put this down here. Maybe we'll use this one. Yeah. Let's find a color. I think I might get a yellow here. I'm going to pull out a a paper artsy yellow to use. And I'm still going to use the same sponge. And Oh yeah, that yellow is blending up nice with the pink. Looks good. These little random marks really please me. They're the kind of thing that you, you know, you could say, oh, I'm gonna make random marks or random little shapes, but you know, you may or may not get something that pleased you. So it's really fun when you have a little stencil like this that you can use. Let's see if anything comes off. Yes, it did rub off a little bit there. So yeah, nice. I'm gonna add some more dripping on this. I think I'm gonna go for a metallic gold this time. And put some up here. Boy, that took a, took a right turn that I didn't expect. That's okay. I hope you can see the glimmer of this. It's really pretty. Put some over the tape and see if it'll dry down. 
Now for me, this is probably done because this page is so, it's so tiny, it's such a tiny journal. And that's one of the things that's so great about it is that you can work in it and be done very quickly. And you can feel a sense of accomplishment. So if you've never made any um, real small journals, you might wanna look into it because boy, it is really, really rewarding. I'm gonna add a little bit of line work here and there. And I think that one is probably just about done. I wouldn't mind splattering a little bit of white paint. Let's see if I can get some. Yeah, there we go. And let me pull back a tiny bit. Splatters almost always go further than you think. But that's enough right there. So this one is done. And let's go back to this guy. This page is still a little bit wet here, but I would, and I think this page, you know, this page could use some splatters too. If I can find my brush again, let's do that. And that one can tolerate more because obviously it has a bigger footprint. And then this page, hmm, I wanted to use this stencil on it. And I sort of feel like it could, my windows are the focal point here for sure. Let's put some text over here. Text in handwriting from an old ledger page. It has some watercolor on it. I think that always makes an interesting addition. And I think I'll set these aside. Whenever I have tiny, tiny scraps like this, even though they don't seem like much, I do hold them and I throw them in my little ultra scrap box because I may want to use them later. I don't think I want any of that. Maybe something from here. This might be it. Right here. I think I want to put Jack's name here, Jack C. Right. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oops. I think I might just take him across both pages. This is from an old children's, some kind of a school book. I love those um, books when they have the, the people's original handwriting in them. I really like that a lot. We had some other, I had painted some other areas over here. I think I might just pull some of that paint out. I have a lot going on here and I wouldn't mind calming this page down a bit. So I'm gonna just get a little bit of this blush paint. Kind of go around the edges. Calms down some of that action. Now that I've calmed down the background, of course, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop it with the, the opera <laughs> because I can't help it. I'm going to get a little bit more of it out, get my sponge, and I'm going to use this bigger stencil here, and I'm going to add some shapes. And again, we're just still working with that one stencil. 
Oh yeah, that's kind of nice, right? Let's put this, let's go ahead and put this here. Okay. mind a word or something down there not sure what I think I might like one of these rub on botanical well, it's not botanical I'm not quite sure what this is but they're cool maybe something like that maybe this would be pretty This is this, um, it's a tape, it's called PET, and um, it's pretty cool. I have this piece of tape here on the end because that helps separate it. It's um, hard to get off of its background now, and you do have to cut it, it doesn't tear. So I'm not gonna use this one, so I'm gonna let it hang out on its background there for another time. I think I want to use, Actually, this one down here is the one. I, I think this one might be good. Let's look at this one. These are cool, though. I um, I got these this tape from Seth After in his shop, and um, they just add these lovely little focal points that are so pretty. Look how pretty that is. Of course, this is not going to go there. Maybe that'll go down here. These tapes are a little on the expensive side, but truly you can get a lot of mileage from them because they're really very beautiful. And since it is, it's not washi tape, okay? So they stick like crazy um, onto whatever you happen to be um, working on. They just, boop, they just grab it. And I think they give a nice little effect. I think I'm gonna get one more of this little one here. What's amazing to me is that they don't um they don't tend to, um, the edges don't tend to show, and it seems like it would, but it really doesn't. So, I don't know, it just kind of goes right in with the background there pretty seamlessly. And as you can see, once you get started <laughs> putting them down, you don't want to stop because they're just so sweet. I'm pulling another one off right now. Somebody's gonna have to take this roll away from me. <laughs> All right, so that adds a nice sense of balance to this, and I think that that looks pretty good. I'm going to um, do some more of the watercolor dribbles on this, probably with the colors like I did on the other one. I like that orange. And 
a little bit of the yellow. Get some drips going. And again, I feel like when I add something like these little tape parts, I really do like to put something else on top to kind of integrate them. Otherwise, I feel like it's almost um, perhaps a little contrived that they're they're just like I just plopped it down there on the top, and I I need to blend it in with the rest. All right, so I feel like we're in good shape. We've got that one. We've got this one. I could maybe add another little bit of. I think this is just fine the way it is. But hopefully I've given you lots of ways that you could utilize these stencils in your own work.